Welcome to Reflections, a show that seeks to examine if others see God in your reflection and how Scripture relates to us in this day and age. Peace and all God's blessings be with you. I am Father Bob Janine, the pastor of Mission St. Sergius and Bacchus, an all-inclusive, welcoming, affirming ministry of the Reformed Catholic Church. I am also the servant general of a small Franciscan community of men and women dedicated to serving the poor, the sick, the homeless, the aged, and all God's children. Today, we are reflecting on the readings for the sixth Sunday of Easter. And they're based on Acts of the Apostles 10, chapter 10, on 1 John, the letter of 1 John letter, and the Gospel of John, chapter 15. The truth I have now come to realize, he said, is that God does not have favorites, but that anybody of any nationality who fears God and does what is right is acceptable to him. These words are attributed to St. Peter and taken from the first reading of this Sunday, which should bring us comfort especially if we are followers of Jesus Christ, if we believe. When we couple them with the words from the second reading, we have an affirmation of God's infinite mercy and love. Regardless of race, creed, nationality, sexual orientation, it doesn't matter to God. The reading says, My dear people, let us love one another, since love comes from God, and everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Anyone who fails to love can never have known God, because God is love. In addition, my dear people, since God has loved us so much, we too should love one another. No one has ever seen God, but as long as we love one another, God will live in us and his love will be complete in us. We can know that we are living in him and he is living in us because he lets us share his spirit. Those words are attributed to Jesus Christ in the gospel. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Remain in my love. Remain in my love. How do we remain in God's love? How do we remain? We remain by having constant daily communication with God. We remain by receiving the Eucharist as often as we can. We remain by talking with God, praying every morning and every evening. Remain in my love. We remain in his love when we keep his commandments. You will remain in my love just as I have kept my father's commandments and remain in his love. Jesus remained and followed the commandments of God. And in so doing, he remained in the father's love. There are a couple of places in Scripture where God is 
said, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Christ continued, and the gospel continues, I have told you this so that my own joy may be in you and your joy is complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Jesus continues, I call you friends because I have made known to you everything I have learned from my Father. I call you friends because I have made known to you everything I have learned from my Father. You did not choose me. No, I chose you. And I commissioned you to go out and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And then the Father will give you anything you ask of him in his name. What I command you is to love one another. Love one another. The gospel since Christ rose from the dead and we rejoiced on Easter Sunday have consistently been about the love of God. Both love as divine mercy, love as the good shepherd, love. Love is what the world needs more of, not the hate, not the distrust, not all the negative, terrible things. We don't need war. We don't need bullying. We don't need murder. We need love. On December 25th, 2005, Pope Benedict issued his first encyclical as the new Pope, and it was entitled Deus Caritas Est. I've mentioned this before, and it's worth mentioning again. Deus Caritas Est means God is love. It matters not. It doesn't matter what Christian denomination you belong to or, for that matter, what religion you hold, the main message is held deep within us is that God is love, and his love is infinite. It is unending. His love is merciful. His love is kind, forgiving, charitable. The, this week's readings remind us of that main fact of the Christian faith. And we need to hold that message tight within our hearts, especially when people are berating us or when we're made to suffer because of discrimination or bigotry. Any person who does not love as Christ called us to do for one another is not is not a real or true Christian. Anyone who bullies, berates, or does anything that hurts another is not a true Christian. A true Christian does not steal, lie, cheat, a true Christian does not hate or murder. A true Christian does not bully, berate people, put people down. No, a true Christian tries to lift people up. A true Christian tries to help people. A true Christian loves. Loves one another as Christ loved us. 
And how much did Christ love us? He loved us enough to die for us. He loved us enough to go through the horrible persecution that he went through in his passion. God's infinite mercy and love is not something that is exclusive for a few. No, it's for the all people. It's for every single human being on the face of the earth. His love asks us to find ways to relieve people from their pain and their suffering. To help people. To reach out. To find ways that we can make life better. Not selfishly, by having the finest clothes or the finest or the latest gadgets or, no. To find ways to make life better for others who aren't as well off as we are. to visit, to take time, and to give of yourself. Working maybe in a food pantry or a soup kitchen or helping to build houses for humanity or seeing how you can, a simple thing, what can you do to assist in your local church? Is there any work around there that you could do? Maybe you could iron the linens used at Mass, offer to do the laundry, maybe mop and clean. Maybe the church or the building needs some painting. Maybe they need help with their rectory or home or friary. Our community is attempting to find a house or a property where we could all live in community, have a chapel, and maybe do more in outreach to the community around us. There is so much need in this world that if you have the kind of love that Christ has, the kind of love that Christ asks us to have, you're going to find ways. And you're going to find ways of strengthening yourself. Make sure that you Take time daily to talk to God, communicate, and pray. Make sure that you start to strive to go to Mass or to your local synagogue or church or temple or mosque and offer prayers to God. We all worship the same God. We're all descendants of Abraham. There is but one God who created all things. The most important commandment Jesus taught us and in doing it, it sums up everything. If we but do what Christ told us when he said what the most important commandment was, 
We can't break any of the commandments. He said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like unto it, love your neighbor as you love yourself. There is no commandments greater than these. You will find that in Mark 12, verses 29 through 31. If we do that, we are truly loving. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Would you want to be beaten? Would you want to be cheated? Would you want to be lied to? Would you like to want to be murdered? Would you want? Think about it. Think about the, the overall Ten Commandments. If love your neighbor as you love yourself. So never do to someone else what you wouldn't want done to you. Throughout the years since Christ taught the apostles and the Christian faith evolved from the Jewish faith, because Christ told us he came to clarify and establish a new covenant between God and his children. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law and the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Matthew 5, verses 16 through 18. Christ was the sacrificial lamb of the Pas Passover, the feast of Pesach. Passover, celebrating the angel of death that passed over and the sacrificial lamb that was slaughtered and the blood was used on the doorpost and the lentils so that the angel of death knew that those were people of God and did not kill or have caused death to the firstborn. Christ came and became the Paschal Lamb. He was slaughtered and his blood was shed so that we could have the promise of everlasting life and that he, in doing so, took upon himself all our sins and brought them to death and conquered them by rising again. He gained for us everlasting life. And it was an assurance of the infinite mercy and love of God. Christ made it clear whom he came to save when he said, For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Matthew 9, verse 13. God extends his endless love and mercy to us when we come to him. When we come to him with love in our hearts for him and for our fellow brothers and sisters. This is the message. This is what we as Christians are called to do, to love. That is the message that should be comforting to us and affirming to us. God's love is endless, infinite, unconditional to all who seek it. Seek and you will find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. 
ask and you shall receive. If we seek God's love, if we know God, love God, and serve God, if we live as God instructed, as Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, then, then we can say we are Christian. For they will know us. They will know we are Christians by our love. Our love for one another. Our caring. Love is not just words. True love is our actions, our deeds. Until we meet again, I am Father Bob Janine, and I ask you, please, visit our websites, www.orderfranciscansofmercy.org and www.missionstsergius.org. There you can learn about our ministry. There are prayers there. There's other things. And there's also a, a tab that says syllabus. And if you t touch on that with your cursor, it will bring you to a place that will tell you what it is to join our Franciscan community either as a brother or as a nun or as a deacon or as a priest. We accept married and single. We do not discriminate. I could say all are welcome. If you're over 18, think about it. Is God calling you? So. And while you're at, on our website, you'll also see a novel that says Donate. By putting your cursor on that, it'll take you to PayPal where you can safely and securely make a donation to our ministry. And it is only through the generosity of our benefactors that this ministry, all of it, our work with the nursing homes and the hospices and the senior living communities and our visitation to shut-ins and working with the homeless, all of it, none, none of it is possible without the generosity of our benefactors. So think about it. Until then, may God bless you and keep you. May he let his light shine upon you and fill you with his infinite mercy and love. May God bless you always and keep you in his love. This program was made possible by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks, just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.